Welcome back to Cairo. I'm here in a little plaza near my hotel, about to meet up with a group to visit the famous pyramids of Giza. Cairo traffic being what it is, I have no idea how long it will take us. To By my estimation, that was about 45 minutes, which is a pleasant surprise. And we're here at the the Great Pyramid, Cheops. And a second great surprise was that there was no group to meet. This is a private tour, somehow or another. And I'm here with my tour guide, Hussein. Hi. <laughs> so, things are beginning well walking directly into the face of the Great Pyramid. And even though we had an early start, if this is an indication, which I'm sure it is, there are already tons of people. Of course, I'm in front of the Great Pyramid, the pyramid that served as the tomb of Pharaoh Khufu, or Cheops, built in the early part of the 26th century BC over a period of 27 years. If you're into numbers, it's 481 feet tall, which was tall enough to make it the world's oldest human-made structure for some 3,300 years. And over the years, it's gotten smaller. That's because most of the smooth limestone casing that once covered it has been removed, which lowered its height to about 454 feet. Up close at the Cheops Pyramid, it's like looking at an elephant from three feet away. There's no real perspective because you're just too close to it. Even as recently as two months ago, a potentially new chamber of this pyramid was discovered. Apparently, a dog triggered it by going in a certain entrance, sniffing around, and there was a small hole the dog exploited. The cameras could see there was more on the other side. So to me, that's rather amazing that after all of these years, we're still learning about what may be within this Great Pyramid. Each of these pyramids were built in honor of and to preserve the remains of prominent pharaohs of the fourth dynasty of ancient Egypt, and each were erected between 2600 and 2500 BC. And I was telling Hassam, if, I'm sure he's been here on many days when the temperature was very, very hot, and he was saying yes, because he's been a tour guide here for 47 years. 47 years. In German and in English. You've, you've probably seen it all, haven't you? Of course, yeah. I'm, I make this uh, job as a hobby, not only as a job. I, I, I'm very proud of my high civilization. I, I love my mother, Egypt, like all Egyptians, of course. So I enjoy every minute with every group in our monument. Yeah, and I, I think that shows too, how some. <laughs> There are things and places in this world that even though you may have never physically seen them are instantly familiar as soon as you do. And for me, that's the case with these pyramids. And that's merely the result of these uh, ancient wonders of the world being embedded in the imagery that I've been exposed to an entire lifetime and now that I'm here physically and seeing them it strangely feels as though I've been here before maybe you've had that experience I'm walking to the second of the three primary pyramids here the pyramid of Kefran if you look with the naked eye and from certain angles and distances you would swear that this is the largest of the pyramids, even though it isn't. That's because its base is at a slight elevation in relation to the others. And there's a slightly different, a little steeper angle of incline, which causes a, an optical illusion. In fact, it's smaller both in height and volume. 
then the Great Pyramid. You can see the Great Pyramid. And uh, I'm looking into the camera at the angles uh, being shown. And sure enough, the Middle Pyramid seems taller. There are numerous pyramids scattered around this desert plain of Giza. But of course, the ones that stand out and the ones that most everyone has a, a mental image of are these three. The Great Pyramid, the Pyramid of Chafre, and the Pyramid of Minkari. And then of course, there's the Great Sphinx just off in the distance to the south and east with the head of a man and the body of a lion that's the oldest known monumental sculpture in Egypt dating to about 2558 BC. Well, from this vantage point, if my head is not totally in the way, one can have a beautiful view of each of the three great pyramids. The smaller or smallest of the three, the Makafri Pyramid, which should be in the lower right of your screen, I suppose, is uh, unique in that it is the smallest but also it is the only one of the three that is without its polished sheathing in its entirety its surrounding complex has something that the other two pyramids do not and that's three subsidiary pyramids aka the pyramids of his daughters this entire site is on the eastern edge of the so-called Western Desert. That's the section of the Sahara Desert that encompasses most of Egypt from the Mediterranean Sea in the north to the border with Sudan in the south and the Nile River to the east. And as I'm walking here, we're about six miles from the banks of the Nile. Giza is of course the name of the town nearest to the pyramids and in which they technically reside even though there's nothing urban about this sandy desert where these ancient ruins rest. This particular hilltop is very popular as a tourist overlook because it allows for a great vantage point of all three of the pyramids. It's also the center of the camel concessions with as you can see many camels and their drivers who wish to sell you a camel ride on the hilltop. I mentioned that the pyramids were long ago deemed one of the seven wonders of the world, of the ancient world. That designation happened during the time of the ancient Greeks, a couple of centuries before Christ. And it so happens that this pyramid complex is not only the oldest of the seven ancient wonders, but it's the only one of them that still exists. Well, as you can see, we've come to the Great Sphinx, which, like the Great Pyramid, enjoys universal recognition as a symbol of ancient Egypt. This limestone statue, which faces exactly west to east, originally was cut straight from bedrock, although it's been restored with layers of limestone block. And the thing is huge, 240 feet from paw to tail and 66 feet high from the base to the top of its head. Making my, my way up from the bottom of this tomb-like structure to an opening that should come out directly beside the shrinks. And of course, you know the, the view would have to be good by the number of people gathered here. In case you're wondering, the head is that of Pharaoh Chafre. Time hasn't been kind to it, especially his face, which sports a broken nose from who knows when. Archaeologists have determined that the breakage was intentional because there's evidence of the use of rods and chisels. A popular myth that the 
nose was broken by cannon fire from Napoleon's troops during his 1798 Egypt campaign is not true. And although the myth lives on, we know that because there's artwork predating 1798 that clearly shows the nose broken. Over to one side of the Sphinx here is, of course, the Great Pyramid with the Trophy Pyramid directly behind in the middle and then the third pyramid to its right. But you don't always see them together because of the topography. The, a little hill hiding one or the, or the other, usually the smallest one. It's really mind-blowing when you think about how these pyramids were presumed to have been built. In the case of the Great Pyramid, most of the stone appears to have been quarried just to the south of the construction site. But even so, it's hard to imagine the effort and cost involved in dragging these gigantic stones up increasingly steep heights to get them in place all the way to the top. And then there's the polished limestone that once covered these structures that was quarried on the other side of the Nile River. They had to be precision cut transported by river barge to Giza and dragged up ramps to the construction site. I mean, just talking about the Great Pyramid, it's been estimated that it took 400,000 men more than 20 years to build it, working in three-month shifts with 100,000 men at a time working. Incredible. Oh, I, I thought you were Egyptian. I know. You look. You Where look, are you from? I'm from the United States. I love you too. Ah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Thank you. Thank yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> They're very friendly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. See you guys. Okay. Well, again. Hello. 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 Again, I've been besieged with well-wishers <laughs> it never stops but it's a good thing what I just did was a breach of protocol according to my very kind guide for the day who explained to me among other things that if people were to ask me where I'm from to tell them I'm from the UK or Canada not the United States because apparently there are some special security protocols in place here on behalf of Americans. Technically one is to report in advance uh, Americans being uh, given tours here at least at this time. That does not appear to be related to the most recent issues with the Israel-Hamas war. It's been a sort of routine procedure, even if often ignored for years here because of concerns by the Egyptian government that perhaps radical elements would cause harm to Americans. Well, that's my upfront and honest revelation but I must add an important amendment to it. And that is nothing in my experience since being in Egypt would indicate anything except the highest of hospitality. Let's put it this way. I'm very happy to be here.